Maxime Bernier, thank you very much for uh, meeting with me in your new studio. Thanks for letting me visit you and uh, tell us what you've been up to since the election. Uh, thank you, Ezra. I'm very, very pleased that you are here today. And, uh, you know, I'm very busy. Uh, I'm not a member of parliament, as you know. I didn't win at the last election, but I'm still fighting for what I believe and what we believe at the People's Party of Canada. Uh, it was a tough election for us, uh, but if you look back, I think we uh, made history. Uh, it took 20 years for the Green Party to have uh, more than 1.6% of the vote. 20 years and six elections. And we did that in one year. We created a party in one year. We had 92% of the writings where we had a candidate, 314 candidates on 338 writings. And so we built that party. And too bad that I didn't win. But when you fight for your ideas and you don't win because uh, you were honest with what you believe, I think it's an honorable loss. And now I'm building the party again. Uh, I'm speaking with our candidates. We, our goal is to have maybe 150 candidates ready at the end of this year and having uh, the other candidates next year. Uh, we are planning for an election in two or three years, so the party must be ready. We don't have any deficit. Uh, we were able to raise more than 2.7 million dollars last year for the first year and uh, we did a kind of a restructuration at our head office in Ottawa. We have a few more people but it's working well. I'm traveling a little bit across the country. I was out west uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, uh, I was a guest speaker for the Wexit uh, movement and having a discussion with people up, up over there on uh, fixing Canada. But right now, the most important for me is that new YouTube channel. The People's Party of Canada official YouTube channel. I uh, will have some guests like I had you for the first one. I want to thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, that was, that was fun. I think people will like it. So the YouTube channel, uh, more present on the social media. I didn't have time during the election. Yes, I was very active on Twitter, but people didn't see my face. And so I would be more present on social media, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And at the same time also, I will uh, always fight for the ideas that we believe in, more, less government and more freedom. Now, we're, the Conservative Party of Canada is in another leadership race already. Yes. And it started off slowly because it's such a high bar to get in, $300,000, 3,000 signatures, and it's a pretty short time period. But now it looks like there's a lot of people sniffing around looking at it. Uh, do you have any thoughts on either the, I guess, the A-list yeah. candidates or, or the others? What, is there anyone that you find hopeful? Is there anyone that you uh, think has ideas that are appealing? That are conservatives. <laughs> yeah, well, I have the same questions. I wonder, what, what do you make of the whole thing? But first of all, I, I, maybe before answering that, let's speak about the process. Mm. And I think the establishment of the party didn't want any outsider. You know, the rules are so tight, uh, mm. 3,000 uh, signatures, uh, uh, $300,000. It wasn't the same rule that when I was running for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Mm -hmm. And the time also is so short for having these signatures and the money. So I think at the end they will have maybe three or four candidates. But um, there's no debate. There's no debate about right. ideas. The big debate that they had recently was about uh, the leader participating in a parade, in a parade, parade. Mm -hmm. and and Peter McKay said he will, and Andrew Scheer didn't, uh, so it's not important. Those are the issues that the media party would want them to dance to. I think that there's important issues that conservative politicians are afraid of, whether it's standing up to the uh, global warming thesis yeah. or free speech, speech or open borders immigration. I think the conservatives should be talking about real things instead of just dancing to whatever the media party tells them to do. Is there anyone in the field that you think would resist the media party? That's my biggest criticism of the conservatives. They aren't showing courage on ideas. Is there anyone 
I, I, no, I don't think so. Uh, their goal is to, like Andrew Scheer said, now it's a centrist political party, and they want to have votes from the liberals. So uh, I don't think they will have a strong line on immigration, like, you know, for us it's very well known. We want to I mean, isn't that a winner in Quebec? That's what I don't get, is that Francois Legault, yeah. and um, not just in his reduction of immigration numbers, but in his Bill 21, talking about the secular nature of the civil service, yeah. those are hugely popular if I'm reading the opinion You're polls. Right. Yep. So it's, and I also notice that critics, even in English Canada, are pretty timid because they, they know that's popular. Yeah. And they also respect the idea that Quebec has a bit of its own identity. Yeah. So it's amazing to me that Legault is, and he's the most popular premier Absolutely. in the country, yeah. according to the polls. Yeah. I, I don't know why a conservative doesn't say, I'm going to choose that instead of the love of a hundred journalists in Ottawa. If it worked for Legault, could it work outside Quebec? I think yes, but in Quebec, we had that debate about identity uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, the only francophone uh, place in North America. Uh, and speaking about immigration, speaking about French language, uh, Bill 101 and all that, it, it's not new for Quebecers. Mm -hmm. But I think in English Canada, uh, speaking about immigration, it is new. As you remember, you know, uh, somebody who supported our work uh, had some billboards all across the country during the campaign and said, you know, with my face and stop mass immigration. And it was a big scandal in English Canada, not in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, so we need to have that debate. And there's a Canadian identity, and we want to promote that. Uh, you know, one of the things that irritated me about the election is I have a friend named Salim Mansour. Yeah. Very thoughtful man. He was one of our Canadians. Well, and that's the thing, is he wanted to run for the Conservatives. I've known him for a decade. Yeah. He's a professor yeah. who worked his way up. I think he started as a taxi driver when he came here. Mm -hmm. He's so thoughtful. He's such a he's like a progressive Muslim. He believes in the separation of mosque and state. Yeah. Like he's he loves Canadian values. In my mind, he's a star candidate. Uh, professor, thoughtful. He's 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 a Muslim immigrant who's made good. Yeah. And he was rejected by the conservatives for being. He said to me. They called him Islamophobic. Yeah. He's Muslim, they're not. That, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. And so he ran for you guys, which. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that he was thrown out is crazy to me. Absolutely, absolutely. And for me, I was very happy because it's, like you said, he was a star candidate for us. Uh, and uh, But I don't think that the Conservative Party will change. I, I said they are morally and intellectually corrupt. And with a new face, that would be the same thing because their goal is only to have the power. But they don't know what to do if they're in government. They don't, you know, they don't. They don't believe in big changes. If you believe in big changes, you need to speak about it during the election, before the election, after the election, all the time. That's what I'm doing. You know, they're conservative. They're supposed to balance, to want to balance the budget. At the last election, no, no, I do share. I'm not able to balance the budget on immigration. I won't do anything on free speech. Nothing special. Uh, on on giving uh, co money to big corporation and and uh, uh, it's oh no we like subsidies to corporation we won't we won't stop that so there's a lot of things that are conservative that they must run on and they must fight for it and they didn't do that in the past and they won't in the future I don't I don't think so well I hope they will because uh, they have the institutional structure. They have the fundraising machine. Right. They have the riding associations. They have the brand name. Yeah. They have all the assets, but you can't put, like, if it was a pyramid, they have all the blocks, but the block on the top didn't show courage, didn't speak. I, but anyway. the establishment, you're right, the establishment, you know, when I was running, I had 49% of the votes. <laughs> I had a lot of support with the same How come you, how you left? I remember. Yeah. In that moment, this is right before the, the the convention in Halifax. I remember thinking, and I think I might have even said it to you: just grit your teeth, stick with it, and if Sheer fails, which a lot of people thought he would, you would immediately be the heir apparent. You would be the everyone would say he should have won last time. Finally, he too bad we didn't do it last time. I and maybe you don't want to talk about this. No, no, no. I. I thought that you could have stayed within the party, being the charismatic communicator, being the keeper of the flame, 
And if Shear would have won, you would be in the tent. And if he would have lost, which he did, everyone has said, okay, it's Maxime, let's do this right. Why did you feel the need to leave? Because all the problems we're talking about right now, the party's not strong, the party's not principled, and you're talking about the successes you had with the PPC. Okay, but you're comparing yourself to the Green Party instead of the P instead of the CPC. Yeah. Why did you leave? Okay, so first of all, after the leadership race, I didn't win with 49% of the vote. But remember, I had only five MPs on 99 MPs who supported me, right. including myself, right. and so forth. Okay. And after that, I worked for 15 months with the establishment of the party. I didn't win with 49% of the votes, so our platform was very popular. Right. Balancing the budget and all our platform was very popular. Mm -hmm. So I tried to push the establishment to take some of our ideas for the next platform, for the next campaign. And Andrew Shea and the establishment were very clear about that. Maxime, all your ideas are extreme, we won't take it, and blah, blah. When and they I, tried to do to you what they did to Salim Mansour. Yeah, no absolutely. And, and when Andrew Shea said publicly, mm -hmm. Maxime Bernier is not speaking for the Conservative Party anymore, he's speaking for himself. Mm -hmm. After 15 months, I said, I cannot do anything in that party. Yeah. So I left, I created the People's Party, and during the election, yeah. that was, they didn't take any of the strong conservative ideas, yeah. and they were centrist and leftist, and, yeah. that, and I, I think right now, the establishment is controlling that party, mm -hmm. and that would be the same ideas, because they're doing politics based on survey and polling and focus group. So when did you leave exactly? What in August? Uh, in August, the election for the the election for the Conservative Party of Canada was in May 2017. Right, and I left the uh, a year 15 months after that in August uh, of 2018. Of 2018. Boy, I wish you. Uh, 19, 19, 19. I wish you would have stuck around. I'm I'm just I'm just saying. Um, that's my personal view. Is there? I think that a lot of bridges were burned both ways. Is there any chance that you would throw your hat in the ring now? Yeah. You say there's no candidate for the Conservatives that, that is up to the ideological and, and the courage yeah. that, that I think you've shown. I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. Thanks. Well, is it just to, like, like if you're saying that the establishment or isn't good and if the candidates aren't good by your checklist, you wouldn't, you wouldn't try, and, I mean, what would happen if all your PPC members came into the Conservatives, bought a membership to, to like, you could raise 300 grand, you have, like, you could do a, I'm just, is it possible to have a reconciliation? I didn't come here to lobby you for that, but I'm just thinking, I agree with you that the candidates who are running so far are not that inspirational. You have a profile, you came in an extremely close second last time, there's been a lot of water under the bridge in the last couple of years, but you wouldn't even consider it. No, no, absolutely not. Because you could make it in your own image then. Yeah, but <laughs> they don't want me, and I don't want to go there. Also, it's past. I turned the page, and I know inside. I, I know what they're doing. You know. I suppose uh, you uh, have a hundred MPs. I'll, 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 I'll give you an example. You know, I want. I speak. I spoke about the abolition of the cartel in Delhi, poultry and milk, right. the supply management. Oh, I don't understand Andrew Shear's obsession with the dairy cartel. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but you know, the MPs, I had a lot of people that were telling me, Maxime, I like you, when I was running for the mm -hmm. leadership, I like your ideas, but you know, I have a lot of dairy producer in my writing, I cannot support you. I had other member of, members of parliament who said, Maxime, I like your ideas, but cutting corporate welfare, you know, I have GM in my writing, I cannot support you. So I didn't have the support mm -hmm. of the MPs, and, and that's impossible. You cannot, uh, if you don't have the support of the MPs, and I didn't have that, with 49% of support from the members. So I don't want, for me, I turned the page, the MPs and the establishment, they're just there to look at the pool and try to win without speaking about the real issues. And that's why, you know, I, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now. It, it, it's, it's a big work, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to be back in government as soon as possible. But, uh, you know, uh, I like fighting for the real ideas. I've traveled to Europe in recent years and I've seen the rise of populist, nationalist, yeah. democratic parties yeah. that focus a little bit on free speech, uh, controlling borders. Migration, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it in all across Europe. Sometimes they actually win. Yeah. Sometimes they come in second. Yeah. But they're very viable. Like, 
even like Italy, right now there's a real populist movement with Salvini. Um, and there's a place in Canada for us. Well, I mean, Brexit won, Trump won. Yeah. I thought maybe you would be that force. And I know from the success of Rebel News that there are a lot of people who want to talk about these issues I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Why institutionally have we not been able to copy Brexit, Trump, Salvini, Geert Wilders in Holland, even um, the um, even Le Pen in France. Some people object to her, but just the populist nationalists. Let's take, let's get out of the the, the UN or get out of uh, the EU. Why haven't we been? Is it the media? Is it the culture? Why can't we do that here? Well, first of all, uh, we didn't have a we didn't have a populist leader before, and I think I'm the first one. Uh, but uh, I think. We will. That's that's our future at the People's Party. Uh, the more we are at, are there, the more we speak about our ideas, uh, the better it will be for us. Uh, maybe uh, the immigration crisis in Europe was a little bit bigger than in Canada. Right now, we still have uh, uh, illegal migrants that are crossing the border in Quebec. It's still, it, it, you know, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't speak about that in Ottawa right now. The Conservative Party doesn't speak about that right now. So What are they afraid of? Like, what are they really afraid of? The CBC already hates them. They can't double hate them. But they're afraid to be uh, people who say, oh, maybe you're racist. You know what happened to me at the last election? Kinsella with the Conservative Party of Canada. The Conservative paid Kinsella to discredit our party. I heard you're suing him. Right? I'm suing him. Yeah, I'm suing him. Absolutely. It's, it's my reputation. It's our reputation. Mm -hmm. But they're afraid of that. They're afraid of the mainstream media. And uh, But you need to do the fight. And people... people know that we, we are doing that fight for a better country. Well, let me ask you about that, because, I mean, in Germany, for example, yeah. the alternative for Deutschland, the AFD party, yeah. it's been around for 10 years or so, I'm not sure exactly, and it's starting, people are getting used to them, and they're comfortable with them, and, and they're a fact of life, and they're not going to go away, and they've managed to resist the cancel culture. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You don't have the seat in Parliament now. You have professional dirty tricksters like Warren Kinsella smearing you as a racist. Um, you were telling me earlier that um, you were speaking somewhere in Quebec and someone tried to have you banned, which never would have happened in the past. Are you worried that you will be canceled? You will be deplatformed. You're a pretty big fish to be deplatformed, but they deplatformed big people in the US and the UK. I'm glad you're starting your YouTube channel and I'm glad you want to keep working, but are you worried you will be shut out, banned from the CBC, banned from newspapers other than far-right Maxime Bernier? Are you worried that you're going to be demonized? Uh, I hope it won't happen, but that's a risk. Um, and if that happened, that would be, that would be huge. Uh, because, you know, former minister, you know, member of parliament for 30 years, look at my past, you know, look at my videos that I did a couple of years ago. It's always about the same ideas. So they cannot uh, say that Bernie is an extreme right-wing radical. They cannot, if they look at what I said the last 30 years as an active politician. And so I, I don't think it will happen, uh, but that's a risk. And I hope in Canada it won't happen. Mm -hmm. um, I was at uh, Les Coulisses du Pouvoir in French a uh, couple of uh, weeks ago. What, what does that mean? Uh, Les Coulisses du Pouvoir, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the daily, uh, not daily, weekly uh, show in uh, French uh, CBC, Radio Canada, speaking about politics, mm -hmm. uh, like the house. Mm -hmm. It's in French, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And so, but for, for the country. And I was there and I explained to them and uh, what I was doing. And so I hope I will still have some well, that's good chance to, to, be, uh, to be at the Radio Canada or yeah. CBC. But uh, it, it's a big challenge for us. One phone call from the Prime Minister's office and that'll stop. Uh, it can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question. You've been very generous with your time. Um, I think about Quebec and in, I mean, I don't know, I don't speak French very well at all. So what I hear is filtered through the Anglo media, which I know I'm getting a distorted view. But Legault and the CAC party started from scratch not too long ago yeah. 
replaced both the red and the blue team, yeah. replaced both the Parti Québécois and the Liberals. Absolutely. Majority, we already talked, he's the most popular premier in the, uh, the country based on polls. Yeah. And the most important in Quebec is very, very popular. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know how important the immigration comments and the secular, you know, no burk is in the workplace. I don't know how important they are. I think people care about that. Absolutely. And I think in Quebec they maybe care extra much because they've been talking about identity and they're worried. Quebecers are worried that they'll lose their hundreds of years of history yeah. and they'll be washed away like yeah. a drop in the sea. So I'm a Western boy originally from Calgary and I'm in Toronto now and I'm right wing uh, Reform Party, <laughs> Preston Manning. But maybe the hope comes from Quebec. I always thought of Quebec as a socialist place and economically it probably is. Mm -hmm. But culturally, maybe by some definitions it's a conservative place. And maybe Quebec can be an example for the rest of us. And that good news can come from Quebec and a role model can come from Quebec, maybe not on economics, yeah. but on culture. And then on pipelines. <laughs> yeah, on, 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 those are big things. Yeah. But on, on immigration, I think you have a point there. How can we get that to spread to Anglo Canada? Yeah, but I try to do that. Uh, and, but on, on immigration, identity, uh, Quebec uh, uh, use and still fight for their identity, francophone. Uh, in, in North America uh, and I think in English Canada they know what's happening right now in Europe and they're looking at it and they say you know we must do like we did in the past being able to select our immigrants and it's a privilege to be Canadians and not these people who are crossing illegally our border, borders right now so that debate on immigration I think we can have a, a, I hope at the next election I would be able to have a debate on that subject. I was not able to, you know, I was shut down and, uh, oh, you're by Kim Sela and the Conservative mm -hmm. Party, you're a racist, you're... So I hope that, and that didn't happen in Quebec. Mm -hmm. in, in the media in Quebec, people know Maxime Bernier mm -hmm. and they're used to that debate. Nobody said in Quebec that I was a racist. Yeah. Uh, and Kim Sela was not credible in Quebec. Mm -hmm. But in English Canada, you know, um, people say, what's, what's that language yeah. about immigration? They were not used yeah. to that. But the more you speak about that, the better it will be. So th there's a nice, I think there's a future for a, a populist party in, in this country. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for that. All right, very interesting. Um, we spoke yesterday, you told me you were having a new show, yeah. a weekly show. That's why I'm here and I said, well, if I go on your show, can you come on mine? Tell us a little bit about your plans for the weekly show. I'm glad you're coming on YouTube. Yeah. I hope you're not deplatformed <laughs> on YouTube. Tell me, um, without giving away, yeah. you know, your, I don't want to steal your thunder, yeah. but tell us what you can about your new program um, and the kind of things you want to do. Yeah, first of all, I will uh, comment the news for sure. I will have an interview uh, every every week with a different uh, person, and I'm very pleased that you were the first one Thank speaking you. about free speech. And uh, we'll have a discussion about the deficit and monetary policy with a statistician and an economist at the, a couple of shows from now. We'll have university professor having some discussion. So the goal is to have debates and to engage a discussion. And I'm open also to have some leftists mm -hmm. that want to debate something with me at my show. Mm -hmm. I'm open for that. And, um, and, and the goal for me personally is to use the social media and YouTube and to promote our ideas because we think that we have the best ideas based on freedom, personal responsibility, respect, fairness. So that's why it was important and it is important for me to start that uh, YouTube uh, channel. Well, we'll sure be watching it and if it's on YouTube, we'll be able to embed your YouTube, video, your, uh, YouTube videos right on our website so people will find it and we'll be sure to keep an eye on it. Yeah, that's the official People's Party of Canada uh, YouTube channel. Perfect. We'll have a link to it on the show. Great to see you. I'm glad you're in high spirits. I'm glad you've got big plans. And I hope that some of your ideas will find purchase in the Canadian political culture because we sure need it. Uh, thank you for having me as well. Right on. Nice Thanks. Nice. Thanks. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.